What up, everybody? You know the camera's on me. It's your boy, Steph Jones. Hi, I'm Mr. Ordinary. My name is Mr. Ordinary, but you can call me Mr. Ordinary, 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 oh. I just want y'all to stay tuned because I'm going to be chatting with your boy, Vaughn Lowry, the Joe Boxer guy, and we're going to have a great conversation coming up next. What's up, y'all? I'm Vaughn Laurie. You probably remember me from the Joe Boxer commercials as well as Top Model. I'm here today talking with Steph Jones, a model singer who is going to do some extraordinary things. He's Mr. Ordinary. His album is coming out in 2008. His single is about to break records. This is my boy. We're about to sing it. And you know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about our modeling paths and how we transition into acting and singing. It's going to be a lot of fun. Y'all got to check it out, all right? So man, um, I know you used to model, so how did you get started like in the industry? And uh... um, It was pretty much, I was going to school, I was going to college, and uh, two of my roommates, they went back to Japan, and I was kind of stuck on my own, and I didn't know what else to do, so I started going on auditions, not going on auditions, but going on go sees. Mm -hmm. I went to six go sees. I got turned down. I got turned down by just about every agency in LA. And right before I was about to give up, I went to Wilhelmina and they was like, we'd love to represent you, but you got to cut your hair. And I figured every reason not to cut my hair right. was like, I ran into Tommy Hilfiger in the store. And he, he was like, I like your hair. And then when I went on my audition, Booked the first one, booked the second one, booked the third one. He was like, you know what? I think we're just gonna have to keep your hair. Keep your hair. So, what yeah. was your first uh, your first job like? My first job was the Destiny's Child jumping jumping video. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, and I had a I had a little crush on on, on Beyonce anyway. I'm sure, so everybody did. <laughs> for me to for me to have um, booked that job, and that was like my first job. I was like, oh, she's from Houston. I'm from Houston. Maybe we can get married on the set or something. But it was it was definitely a good look, and I just started working. So did you always want to be a model since you were younger? Like, I mean, you didn't study modeling in college. You know what I'm saying? No. <laughs> like, what was your major in school, and what school did you go to? I went to UCLA. My major was psychology. Oh, but I left. I left school because I, I I just got tired of it. I just you know, I didn't feel the love to go to school and sitting behind and talking to teachers and stuff like that. That's boring to me. Right. But um, the uh. You gotta ask me that question again. I forgot what you said. No, I was just saying, what was your major in college, and what, did you always want to model? When you were oh young? no, my I'm an athlete. Like I still right. I still run track. I ran track in college. My thing was being an athlete. I always wanted to be in front of people. But then when my back was against the wall and I didn't know what else I wanted to do, I was just like, uh, okay, maybe I can just go on a few auditions. I am in L.A. Oh, cool. Would you run in track? I did um, the 100-yard dash or I don't remember all that stuff. 100-yard dash. I mean, not 100-yard dash. They used to run the 100-yard dash with Jesse Owens right? like 50 years ago. <laughs> no, I used to be in the relays and stuff like that. But I did that in seventh grade. You know what I'm saying? Right. No, I ran the 400 hurdles, and actually I still train. I had a meet last Wednesday. Amongst everything else that I'm doing right now, I still train. Wake up 6.30 in the morning, go train up, up at uh, West L.A. 7 to 9. Oh, dumb. Got meets every Wednesday. And I plan on being the first artist to qualify for the Olympic trials and get a Grammy at the same time. Big All dreams, right. brother. Big That's dreams. That's how you're supposed to do it. That's yeah. crazy, though, because we have a lot in common. When I actually box, like, Monday through Friday. And um, it's really exhilarating. It's like, uh, like you said, I like 
being an athlete as well. It's, it's, a, it's boxing for me is dope because it's like it's not about a team player or whatever. It's about you being against the world. You know what I'm saying? And right. it's like a whole nother world because you're so focused on what you're doing, which is either sparring or hitting or knocking that bag out. You know what I'm saying? That's what right. I like about it. I really do. But um, taking yeah. your passion out on that bag. Right. <laughs> Taking yeah. your aggression and your frustration, actually. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I got started. I was actually, it was so funny. I, I was in New York, and I was actually going to Cornell University in Ivy League school. I was studying industrial and labor relations, which is a business and law program. Nothing to do with modeling or acting. Never wanted to be a model. Always wanted to be an actor. Right. And, basically, I was walking down the street, and a celebrity makeup artist, Sam Fine's assistant, was like, dude, you should model. I'm like, all right, cool. How many times you heard? Oh, yeah, exactly. I'm like, okay, is this like, I mean, yeah, exactly. It's like, whatever. How much money do I have to pay? It turned out that actually it was a, is a real situation. Sam Fine was a, you know, he was doing Haley Berry's makeup at the time. He was doing everybody's makeup. Vanessa Williams, uh, shoosh, a lot of people, and uh, Iman. He he basically hooked me up with a fashion photographer named Fadil Barisha, and Fadil took pictures of me, and I'm like, whatever. The next day, I got the negatives and the proofs, and I was like, "Dang, that's me!" You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I couldn't right. believe that. You know what I'm saying? I that's worked your out. First actual photo right, shoot. Right, that's my first actual photo shoot, right. and actually, a couple of those images they're still hot today. It's But I never wanted to really be a model. I always wanted to go to school. I was the first to graduate from college. And then on top of that, I was able to fulfill my dream of going to an Ivy League right. school as well. So I was real happy for that. And growing up in Detroit with, you know, two sisters and a brother, you know, was it was tough times for us. You know what I'm saying? And I read in one of your bios that, or one of your interviews online, that you grew up in a single-parent home as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah was, you want to tell me more about that? Yeah. I, I, I can relate to the fact that you said that your lights were off and you, you know, you had to light it by candlelight. Oh, yeah, man. But so. the thing about it, it, it didn't make me feel uncomfortable because that was normal to me. Like, I didn't, I thought everybody's lights got caught up, cut right. up. Right. Like, once a month or something like that. And I don't, I thought that was for everybody. You know, it was all normal for me. So it's like growing mm -hmm. up in a single pa parent home, it's like right now I wear thrift clothes. I'm not into to the desi designer stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like even to this day, even like having money in my pocket, I still be shopping three, four hours a month going to the thrift stores. It's like I grew up with my mom. She was like a garage sale person. And so it kind of carried over into the lifestyle oh, right. I am right now. I just, I'm able to appreciate the life that I had growing up. And so that's why I'm able to, to, to give off that same light in the life that I live right now. And um, it's... I can't really be like, oh man, I had it hard growing up. I didn't know, I didn't know any better. Now that I think about the life that I live now and the life back then, like I didn't know any better back then. I was just a little kid and I thought everybody's life was the same because it was like normal for me. Yeah, so. I can definitely relate to that too. It's like a gangster's paradise, so to speak. Um, but at the same time, one thing I did notice is that you know kids can be cruel. You know what I'm saying? And having one pair of jeans for your entire week. You know, worth the clothes is kind of, it's messed up. And growing up in that situation and growing up in an environment where you actually have to defend yourself, like mentally, physically, and verbally, protect yourself. Because Detroit, for me, is an industrial town. So, I mean, yeah, I thought I was rich at times, but it was basically I was denying who I was at the time and denying where I was staying. Because, you know, to grow up in, the, in, 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 in an area with, you know, that's infested with prostitution and, and crack cocaine, it's like, I mean, for me, I couldn't really deny that, and I had to really wake up to that, and when I saw that, I, I said to myself, I could do one or two things. I could be a part of that lifestyle, or I could try to get out of that, or get away from that, and then maybe I can go back and make a change. Definitely, you have a yeah. choice. Exactly. It doesn't matter whether your your mother or your father did drugs, at the end of the day, you, you have, have a choice. choice. Exactly, that's exactly how I felt, too. Yeah. But I do relate to you with the whole, um, the whole gear thing, because for me, if I can get it for free, it's me. You know, right. <laughs> you work on a job, it's like, can I get right that here? built, right? This is a five thousand dollar watch. I definitely did not pay for it. I'm yeah. like, oh, let me get that real quick. Yeah, basically. Going shopping in your closet. 
That's all. That's what it's about. Oh yeah. So basically, you said you had pretty much walked into Wilhelmina Models, which for a lot of people, they don't realize that that's one of the top male modeling agencies in the country. I mean, yeah. they have a women's division, but I mean, come on, the male the male division of that agency is amazing. And what was your biggest job with that? I mean, your first job, actually. What was your first and your biggest job with that agency? My, my first job was the Destiny's Child video. But, like, right after that, man, I don't know, it was weird because, like, the first 12 auditions I went on, mm -hmm. I booked all 12 of them. Like, and it just it just kept happening. And, it, and, and half of them were, like, direct bookings because I would work, I would work with one photographer mm -hmm. and then... He'd be doing the same job, and then I just kept getting direct booked, and I hardly ever had to go on auditions, whatever. But um, what was your I first print first, one? My first print, it was either Wilson's Leather or Old Navy. I'm not Wilson's. No, you know, it was Old Navy. It was Old Navy, and then right after that, I did, I did the Old Navy commercial. So I did the campaign and the commercial, and then right after that, that I did the L'Oreal print, the L'Oreal uh, print and commercial. And I was like the first African American in in, in a L'Oreal commercial right. campaign, and which is horrible because that was like 2000. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that we had to wait to 2000 to get the first African American yeah, in anything. 2000, but. and then they, you know, they dyed my hair burgundy. And my my hair fell out. <laughs> it was crazy. They dyed your yeah. hair burgundy. So it was like a burgundy like. Oh, so you were selling the actual hair. You was like you was doing the whole. Yeah, like oh, they had. Okay. I thought you was doing background for. No, no, for the L'Oreal commercial, it was it was like seven chicks and me, oh, and wow. I had my hair like this, and they dyed my hair, and it, I was like the first African American, to like, it, like male model on a L'Oreal commercial. They had Ralph Jacobs on the on the print stuff for L'Oreal. Oh, okay, cool. But they had Steph Jones on the, the commercial. On the commercial. We did the commercial. They did it. It was national and international. I went to the movies to watch American Pie. They had that on the big screen. I was like, I'm about to get paid. Yeah, that's cool. Congrats on yeah, that. And then I got into a car wreck and got sued for about $90,000. Give me that check. Take the check. Give me a check. Take yeah. the check. So, and I know you did Joe Boxer, and which everybody, because in that, in that commercial, like, that's my personality every day. And everybody hit me and it was like, I saw this person that reminds me of you in the Joe Boxer commercial. And I was like, and I know you could have done that commercial. So I watched it. I was yeah. like, I would have done it just like that. And then every time I saw it, I was like, yeah, dude, he's about to, he about to get his, his cake big time. So what was yeah. that like for you? That was, that, that was basically, you know, being a native Detroiter, that was like winning the lottery. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's my, I just won the lottery day. <laughs> Woo! You know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, I'm, I'm not ashamed of that campaign. I mean, that campaign, I was, be that campaign was so fun. It, it, it catapulted me <clears throat> into like my first big break. You know what I'm saying? And it was just an amazing experience. But yeah, it was great on to be on talk shows. And on talk day. shows, you know, Today Show, Jay Leno, The View. It was just a, it was an amazing experience. And to be a part of something like that, you know. And then you look in your, the yearbooks of like my nephew and my, my nieces, and it's like, bam, it's like, you know, the most interesting moment in 2003, 2004, and this is your right. face. That's crazy. And That's like, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but 